What's up everyone, back again with another review for the LTA Movie Club. This time I watched The Fountain by Darren Aronofsky. Now, bit of a admission, I have seen this movie before. Um, when it came out in the theaters, I really wanted to see it, never got around to it. When it came out on DVD, yes, back in the day, um, I rented it and I watched it with my then girlfriend, now wife. And all I can really remember is that I was really tired when I was watching it, and I didn't like it at all. So, I figured, what better time to give it another shot. So, here I was uh, with the movie club. This was the recommendation. So, I dove into it. And, uh, again, like my other videos, my likes first, my dislikes second. Um, likes. I loved the cinematography in this movie. Gorgeous, gorgeous filming. The framing, the effects, everything was just spot on the entire time. I loved it. Um, also the music, I think it was Clint Mansell, I could be wrong, but just great, great sweeping score uh, for this film. Just totally awesome. Now normally I like Darren Aronofsky as a director. I like Pi, I like Requiem for a Dream, most recently Black Swan, but this one was a little bit of a letdown for me, so I'm going to launch into the dislikes. Um, now, this is based off of a graphic novel, uh, one that I've read parts of. I could never really get into the graphic novel, which, you know, is part of the reason I couldn't really get into this film. But as far as the film goes, it follows uh, Hugh Jackman's character. Again, I'm, I'm terrible with, with character names. Uh, Hugh Jackman's character and his wife, I know she's named Izzy. Uh, oh, and he's Tommy. So you have Tommy and Izzy. Um, and Izzy has uh, a brain tumor. And the film follows, you know, his, his dedication and his quest to find a cure. Um, and he works on experimental, um, you know, a lab that, that tries to find a cure for tumors. Um, and through the process, he, he actually becomes more distant from her because he's so obsessed with curing her. But uh, at the same time, she is writing a book uh, about them and the fountain of life and the tree of life and all this stuff. So the movie kind of hops around from a couple different perspectives. You have, you know, the, the, the present day of Tommy trying to cure Izzy. Um, you have this past uh, about a Spanish conquistador who's trying to find, um, you know, the tree of life, uh, the fountain of youth um, for a queen uh, that has sent him on this mission. And then you have the future about bald wolverine in a snow globe flying through space. Um, that's really all I got for, for this movie as, as far as a summary because, frankly, you know, if you don't watch it, you're not really going to understand it. I watched it and I don't really understand it. Um, my problems with this movie are um, the, the, the skipping perspectives. The, yes, I get this as a story. I get, you know, this is her story and he's reading it. And it's an interpretation of, of both his dedication and their relationship. Um, but sometimes the more obtuse a movie can be, the less interesting it is. And I found that to be the case in this movie. I just found it to be kind of like Men Who Stare at Goats, odd for the sake of being odd, and I don't necessarily think that was the right choice for this. Um, I hate Rachel Weisz or Wise or whatever. I hate her. She is just a bland actress. Um, she's good looking. But I hate her, so she was not a bonus in this movie for me. Um, what else do I have to say about this movie? Uh, well, there's a cum tree. If you watch the guy with glasses, he mentioned that. So yeah, it's a tree that comes and then makes you flowers all over your body. Yeah, that fell flat. Anyway, uh, I definitely thought that this movie could have been more. Um, I want to say, you know, I love these artsy movies or whatever, but I really, I really don't. They have to serve a purpose. Um, much like I mentioned in my last review with The Men Who Stare at Goats, which I really did fucking hate, 
This one I don't loathe, but I just, the potential it had to be something more, really, and the gorgeous cinematography and the gorgeous music, you know, made me, you know, just really disappointed that they couldn't just rein in the story and, and rein in the, the, the performances and everything, because it was a mess. Just a total mess from beginning to end. So, bottom line, would I recommend this? No, in no way, shape, or form. Like Men Who Stare at Goats, I don't know why this was like upvoted among the community because, frankly, it's an hour and a half and it's probably an hour too long. The, the story this tells could have been told in a half hour with just you know, all the gorgeous shit and just leave out everything else because it was just plotting and boring and why the fuck is this so artsy and hollow? Because I didn't give a shit. I mean, you know, Izzy, you're supposed to feel bad because she has cancer and, and you're supposed to, you know, feel bad for Tommy because he's losing the love of his life. I didn't. I, I didn't give a shit. And then he, you know, fucking blows up in a sun and then he puts the jizz in his stomach and flowers shoot out of him and, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, so anyway, yeah, not a huge fan of this movie. Um, moving forward, though, I think we get to watch Starship Troopers, which is kind of a guilty pleasure movie, so that one's incoming. We get to watch Network which is the first fucking good movie I've seen on the movie club that isn't like overly artsy or overly stupid so that's fucking great you can see a dirty shame which is from John Waters in my hometown of Baltimore and you get to see I forget what the, oh, the kite runner we'll get to that later anyway that's my review hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time thanks